How do you estimate the mean value of a random variable's probability density function? Well, you can do an experiment. We'll call it experiment one. And you can draw samples from the random variable and then simply average those samples. And that will give you an estimate of the mean value. But of course, we see straight away that that estimate depends on the samples that we took. So if we did another experiment, experiment two, where we pick different samples, then we'd get a different estimate for the mean. So now we start to think, we'd like to know about the accuracy of these estimates. One thing we'd like to know is how big n should be, for example. Let's think about what this looks like on the probability density function diagram. So here's an example of a probability density function, and I'm showing the mean, which we often use mu for. I've drawn it like a bell-shaped curve here, but it could be any function here. And then we think, where are these values? Well, x1 might be here, for example. Uh, x1, uh, the estimate of the mean here. x2 might be here, for example, the, the second one. And we'd like to know, you know, how accurate are they going to be? How close are they going to be to mu. And I think now, looking at it like this, you can realize that these estimates are actually random themselves. So they are estimates of the mean value of a random variable, but they themselves are random. It, they depended on which particular samples you took. And that's a very key concept to understand about estimating random variables. These estimates are themselves random. So let's write down an equation for that then. So here is an equation which is in terms of the random variable, writing it with a capital X, which highlights that the estimate, the hat here is for an estimate, the estimate of the mean, where the bar is for the mean, the estimate of the mean is a random variable. It's in terms of these random variables xi, which you don't know what their values are until you perform the experiment. So this is a generic equation for this random variable. So of course, when we ask ourselves about the performance of this estimate, we'd like to know its mean value and we'd like to know its variance. So this is quite a complex concept to get your head around the first time you think of it. Here is the expected value of this estimate. And it's, the, it's simply the expected value of this term in here. Now, before I write out the equation for that, let me just write out this in words over here to get our heads around it. This is the expected value of the estimate of the mean of the random variable PDF. The random variable is random. It has a mean. We are estimating that mean. And this is the expected value of that estimate. Now, it's simple to calculate. You simply, the expected value, the one on n comes out the front, uh, the expectation comes inside the summation, and we've got the expectation of these random variable, the original random variable, and that is, the expected value of that is x bar. Uh, we've got one on n, you're adding up n of them, so this actually equals x bar, which is the mean. So this way of estimating the mean is a random variable. The mean of that random variable is equal to the true mean. So we say that this is an unbiased estimator. So that's a very good estimator for the mean, but we're not too sure still. We still haven't got an idea of how wide these estimates can be apart. So we'd like to know about the variance of this estimate. So here's the equation for the variance of the estimate. We won't derive this, but uh, this is what it is. And you can see that the variance of this estimate is sigma squared, which is the variance of the random variable, divided by the number of samples that you take. And this is a nice property because it shows that the more samples you take, the smaller the variance of the estimate. And what that means is these values here will be closer to the mean if you have a bigger n, if you have a bigger sample size. So as n goes up, the implies the variance goes, the variance of the estimate goes down, which is what you'd like to have. It becomes more accurate. Another thing we see is that if the random variable itself, the original random variable has a small variance, then you don't need to take so many samples because this variance will be small if 
the variance of the original random variable is small. So in our picture over here, if this distribution is narrow, then you won't need to take so many samples to get the same level of accuracy in your estimate of the mean. And another thing to point out is that when you take a lot of measurements, you're adding up a lot of random variables. And the central limit theorem tells us that the resultant random variable, your estimate, will have a Gaussian distribution. And so that is often a useful result. And a final thing to mention is that these equations hold when the total population is much bigger than the sample size. If your total population is small, then when you take your samples, you'll be changing the probability distribution each time if you don't do it with replacement, and so you'll get slightly different equations. But it's just under that assumption. And another assumption is that the samples are independent. So it's just important to know that when you're using these equations. So if this video has helped you to understand this concept, give it a thumbs up, it helps others to find the video. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the description below where you'll find a link to a web page which contains a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.